Right. Welcome to the waning hours of the Labs conference, um, and probably the most important talk of the conference. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be talking about making some beer. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> well, let me. All right, so <clears throat> first uh, disclaimer, I'm not a master brewer. Actually, I think we may have one sitting in the audience over here. Stefan Fent, I hear, uh, does a lot of brewing. But um, I do like to talk about beer, like to drink beer. Um, and when not doing those things or skiing or biking, I do work on stuff for SUSE. I work on a virtualization team and primarily work on uh, the tool stack, uh, things like libvirt and tools above there and, and tools related to libvirt. Um, <coughs> and this, I, I, I had a friend who kind of got me into brewing and went and brewed with him one day and he <coughs> had a pretty complex setup. It was an all day process. Uh, this was several years ago and and you know, like, I want to do this, but I just didn't want to invest in all the equipment and, and it was really time consuming. <coughs> and a couple of years later, he had asked me, hey, you want to come and brew again? I have this new system, you should check it out. And I thought, yeah, I, I, I'll do this. And, and you know, I went over and brewed with him and in the end I thought, this is the system for me. It simplifies things uh, and it, it's what will get me into brewing and so, <coughs> Yeah, I decided last Christmas to ask folks that, you know, in-laws and so on who wanted to buy Christmas gifts, wish list is all brewing equipment and added on there these things and um, and got those at, at Christmas. And <coughs> first thing I started realizing was, you know, I needed some way, uh, the friend who got me into brewing, he had some software for dealing with recipes and I thought, you know, I, I need to get that, but he was buying some um, proprietary ones called Beersmith. And so I started looking around, is there some options to that? And there's some online services and so on, I'll talk about that. But uh, found an open source project that um, is essentially a brewing calcu brew recipe calculator and thought, you know, this will be the thing that I want to play with and, and investigate. And so I did, and here we are, and I'm talking about it at the labs conference. <coughs> so, <coughs> first, uh, well, just a little bit of a kind of agenda of the talk. We'll talk about the ingredients of beer, the process, a little bit behind it. Uh, I'll talk about my equipment. <coughs> and then I was going to show off this recipe calculator, but um, can't do that. Jurgen doesn't have this on his laptop. Um, so, we'll just make it through the slides. <coughs> So <coughs> what is beer made of? The most abundant ingredient in beer, of course, is water. And this is one of my favorite water sources. It's a spring that has water boiling out of the ground, or bubbling, it's not boiling, it's that water is about 56 degrees Fahrenheit uh, year round. So 365 days a year, there's this miracle water there uh, flowing out of the ground. This is near Yellowstone National Park, actually. Um, <coughs> yeah, and like I said, this is miracle water. I mean, I first started drinking this stuff some 147 years ago, passing through this area, and you know, it's been great for my health and skin. But, <coughs> but it is really good water, and I thought I want to make beer with this water. Um, <coughs> and so the spring, I had planned on working on this <coughs> open source brew target soft recipe, uh, brewing recipe software during Hack Week. And <coughs> at the end of that, I planned to make a beer and thought, you know, I'm going to bring my car boys up here this spring and fill them with the spring water <coughs> and make some beer from this stuff. So interestingly, that <coughs> interestingly though, I thought, you know, one might think, oh, this would make the best beer there is. But um, I've come to learn that water chemistry plays a lot in making beer. Um, <coughs> all the grain, the various grains used in making beer, 
each one has a specific pH level <coughs> of the water and specific water chemi <coughs> chemistry characteristics that are most efficient at, at extracting grain or extracting the sugar from the grain. And so <coughs> even though this may be the most delicious water in the world, it may not you know, produce the best beer. So <coughs> the next ingredients in beer that uh, I call them the plant-based ingredients are grains, <coughs> are fermentables, they often call them, um, which are generally some type of malted barley, wheat or oats, and, uh, and hops, of course. <coughs> so hop or the grains are called fermentables because they provide all the fermentable sugar uh, to make the alcohol. And hops, their pretty much only reason in a brewing process is for flavor. Um, <coughs> everything in, in the ingredients contribute to the flavor of beer, but hops is pretty much their only uh, purpose. You know, if we didn't have hops, you would just be drinking fermented syrup, really. It'd just be a really sweet beer, right? Hops bitter the beer and balance the flavor and make it drinkable. And by the way, there's just endless varieties of grains and hops. I mean, the list is endless, and well, I can't show you. And each of these beer recipe calculators have a database of all the hops and yeast and grains and so on, and it's huge. It's, it's just a quite variety of them, and which goes into or reasoning why there's a large variety of beers. <coughs> Um, yeast, of course, is the next one and can be considered probably the most important um, ingredient in beer. There's some old saying that kind of demonstrates this, that brewers make wort and yeast makes beer. Um, <coughs> and I'm kind of lazy at this point. There's people who have their own yeast cultures and grow that and so on. I'm pretty lazy and usually buy this Y yeast, liquid yeast, and even lazier yet, use a pitch that's a fast pitch so I don't have to make a yeast pitch. Just pour those things together um, into a flask, and I'll usually let this yeast population grow by you know, placing it on a stir, um, stir plate and keep it oxygenated for several days before adding it to the beer after I've made that. <coughs> so this is my equipment. <coughs> it's called um, a brew in a bag system. And it comes from having, you, you put all your grains in a bag and then soak them in the pot. Well, this is the bag for me, this grain basket. This serves as both a boiling pot and a mash tun. This is a basket for hops, so when I'm boiling and adding hops, um, <coughs> they all go in that grain basket so I don't have you know, the hops all in, in the wort. And then there's a controller <coughs> and a, a heating element for heating in the wort and boiling the wort, a pump to circulate <coughs> this wort through the system, particularly when it's time to chill it, Got to circulate it through this wort chiller, chill it down to fermentation temperature. <coughs> so this system, though, is turnkey for the most part. I bought this. This is how it comes. <coughs> all the parts are there. All, everything you need to start brewing is pretty much in this system. Uh, I needed the carboys and you know a few other things, but for the most part, you know, turnkey system. Like I said. <coughs> So <coughs> a little bit about the process, kind of skip some slides here, but you take, <coughs> or I should have added some slides, I'm kind of jumping right into it, but uh, essentially, you know, take your milled grains, add them to the water, and steep this stuff. Uh, the water is generally heated to some temperature, grains are added. <coughs> um, in this case, I have that pump system set up and circulate this wort essentially through the system and continuously circulating that water over the grains so that it can you know essentially extract as much of the sugar out of there as it can. <coughs> uh, 
after the mash step where th you make the wort, then it's time to get the grains out of there <coughs> and boil and start adding your hops. Um, so in here, I, I'm actually <coughs> probably, oh yeah, I have a wort chiller already hooked up here, but uh, this is a point where I've already removed the grains and uh, in the process of boiling the wort, actually. <coughs> And then once the boil's done, chill the wort um, and transfer it to a fermenter. Before adding the yeast, I like to oxygenate this wort so the yeast has you know, lots of oxygen to live and survive and, and be efficient at its job. Um, and also before adding the yeast, a very important thing is to test the uh, original gravity, it's called, OG, or starting specific gravity of this. Um, <coughs> the specific gravity measurements before and after fermentation allow us to determine how much alcohol is in the beer. So after ac oxygenating, <coughs> add the yeast and ferment per the recipe schedule. Um, this is some beer I'd made in a carboy, ready to start fermenting. Um, I have a dual stage controller for controlling the heat of that beer. Um, and this was done in the winter, so my house is pretty cool and was doing this on a lower level. And so I have a heat wrap that I can put around that carboy to keep that beer, that beer at a constant fermentation temperature. <coughs> Fermentation in action. This is always what you want to see, like in day two or so of, you know, the, the thing's almost angry, making all sorts of noise, bubbling, gases coming off there. You know that, you know, you had a good yeast population, you have, you know, a good amount of sugar in that wort, and we're making alcohol. <laughs> I also like to transfer <coughs> the beer about halfway through fermentation to a secondary uh, fermenter, primarily just for clarity reasons, so that the beer be a little bit clearer. Because uh, after I transfer it, I'm left with you know all this yeast shit. I call it products of the you know yeast e eating away at the sugars and the proteins and so on that are left over. We leave that stuff behind. <coughs> and then after fermentation, it's time to keg or bottle. I don't bottle beer. I just keg it, um, so the beer goes into the keg and carbonate. Um, I carbonate <coughs> at 22 PSI for like a week. Um, if I have other beer in my um, kegerator that I'm pouring, that's much lower PSI, about 10 to 12. And in that case, I'll let this carbonate an, an extra week or so. But because I only have one regulator at the moment, if I had two, then you know I could control m multiple kegs at different pressure. But um, it's rare that I don't have at least one keg in a kegerator, and you know so I'm usually letting it carbonate a couple weeks. And then it's time to pour and enjoy. Um, this was a amber ale that I made not long after getting this system. It was my first beer that I made and. With the help of my brew buddy, it turned out pretty good. So <coughs> maybe it gives you a little bit of an idea of it, it can be a pretty complex process making beer, right? We have all these types of grains. There's the water chemistry thing that I mentioned. Um, hops, how much do I want to add to make sure I have a flavorful beer? Um, so it's quite a bit of you know, adjustments you can make to these ingredients in a process and <coughs> without some kind of guidance or help, um, you know, we just may end up making vinegar. And the amount of time that you spend on this is not something you want to produce, you know, smoked beer, essentially. <coughs> so, you know, I'm like, as I mentioned, my friend was into this beer smith uh, application. It's a fat client that, um, <coughs> that is like 35 US dollars and increasing about each release they have. And just really something that I wasn't interested in, particularly 
working for an open source company all these years and become accustomed to the freedom of open source tools. I just didn't want to be spending money on this thing that you know I just didn't think would be useful for me anyway. Well, it would be useful, but I just, yeah, <laughs> cheap, I guess. I just don't want to spend the money on the thing. And so I looked at you know some online services as well. <coughs> the only two that I found that are still alive are the Spruer's Friend and Brugger. <coughs> Brugger's free. Uh, you can use that service for free, but it's very limited, not much functionality. Um, Brewer, pardon? Yes. <laughs> and it is free as a beer. And Brewer's Friend also has a perpetual trial membership, but it, it's limited functionality as well. If you want the full functionality, which appeared, I didn't pay and try it, but from what I read and looked, is pretty featureful. It was, uh, I think, three US dollars a month, or you know, it'd have been more than that because I think the yearly rate was like 30 US dollars. Um, at any rate, it was another one that <coughs> you know, I really didn't want to pay this fee, and um, the perpetual trial license really just didn't provide the functionality that I was looking for. And they're also closed source. So then there's Brew Target, which is an open source back client as well. It's um, <coughs> hosted on GitHub and uh, has some pretty general or liberal licenses. The one that I like the most, I'd never heard of this license, is the what the public license. <laughs> and I'd like to show it if I had, it has a single clause in there. It's zero dot, do what the fuck you want with the software, <laughs> and that's it. So I was like, this is a pretty cool license. You know, I could imagine some guy being frustrated with license one day and throws his hands up and is like, that's it. You know, I'm coming up with. But yeah, pretty funny. Um, <clears throat> and so here's where I wanted to show some brew target, but uh, we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, at any rate, there is a website for this tool. There is a GitHub project. And we could take a look, but we can't. Anyway. As I said, I, at a hack, uh, hack Week for me has always been working on some work-related thing, always. Um, you know, some new tool for my own personal process, some feature that's kind of on the fringe that I never have time for. Those are always kind of things that I played with at Hack Week. <coughs> and this one I thought, you know, I'm going outside the box quite a bit. Um, I'm going to look at this piece of software, see if... Uh, you know, it meets my needs, see if there's anything I can do to improve it. Um, <coughs> uh, that's all right. Um, in, the, in the proceedings, there's a few screenshots in there anyway, so. Um, and, oh, yes, I've packaged the thing, and so you've, huh, we could have just downloaded it <laughs> on your machine and installed the thing there, I suppose. <coughs> but at any rate, at Hack Week, I did play with this thing quite a bit. There was one thing that I immediately found was there was no support. There's an equipment editor and a thing where you can go and define your equipment profile. And there's a bunch of canned ones. And they're kind of followed a traditional, you know, they're designed around a traditional brewing process. There wasn't really much support for a brew in a bag system like I have. And so I started looking at code a little bit and trying to figure out how I would add this. And got to the point where I'm like, eh, I, I'm going to have to go to the upstream community and kind of ping them and see what's going on. And before doing that, I do a little bit of searching around and find there's some GitHub issue that uh, describes this, right? We need support and brew target for brew, your, brew in a bag systems. And <coughs> um, as it turns out, they ended up closing that issue at, and just have some documentation in there about how um, you can set the thing up, this equipment editor, uh, to represent brew in a bag systems. Um, but it's really kind of clunky. I would have showed you if, <coughs> if I'd have been able to bring the thing up, but it's, it, it's not very intuitive. So um, one of the things that you know, I may look, look at doing in the future is reopening this issue and saying, hey, you know, I could spend some cycles to work on this a little bit and make things intuitive if you're interested and, and see how that goes. <coughs> um, I had started the thing up last night and was playing with some stuff and 
and come across a couple crashes, so <coughs> you know, I already have a few items that I can work on. And in the process of getting this packaged and built on SUSE, I have a few patches queued up as well, like the configure script and so on that uh, I had to deal with you know, some dependencies uh, that we may have named differently than other distributions. <coughs> So the, <laughs> the beer I made at Hack Week, um, so I played with this thing all week, amongst some other interruptions during Hack Week. And then the last day of Hack Week, I cranked out a recipe from this uh, recipe calculator and made beer. Um, and <coughs> that spring that I had collected the water from is called Howard Springs. I had made a blonde ale, myth and an E, and then I had to kind of put lizard or some susa related thing in the name of this, so it comes up with this quite long name, and um, yeah, I like it. <coughs> but um, I was a little bit off on, so the target starting gravity for this recipe was 1051. Um, it's kind of how you read those numbers. And my final gravity was, or the target was 1051 with a final of 1013. Um, my starting was a little bit low, and probably due to that spring water, right? It just didn't have the characteristics to extract as much sugar as possible out of that grains, and so I fell a little bit short of the OG, but <coughs> did a little bit better on the final gravity because I had a pretty good use population. <coughs> and so, um, if you remember from chemistry, specific gravity is the amount of dissolve solids in water. And so in this case, and in, in the original gravity is sugar, the amount of sh dissolved sugar in water. And as the yeast eats that, <coughs> turns it to alcohol, um, that gravity is going to be lower, right? And then we determine alcohol by volume by this simple formula. It's just starting minus <coughs> the final gravity divided by that constant, which I suppose represents <coughs> some gravity distance of, or difference between alcohol and, and water. <coughs> so I was a little bit off on the ABV, but <coughs> you know, I don't really brew beer just to have alcohol. Um, it's for the taste, right? I mean, the end result here is an all grain <coughs> product that has no preservatives in there and it's really tasty. <coughs> um, there's some other, Often, maybe you see them on labels of beer, some other interesting <coughs> numbers like IBU, International bitter Bitterness Units. Um, <coughs> I didn't put that on here because it's really, I don't know, maybe Stefan would have something to say about it, but I, I think it's more of a taste perception, IBUs. It kind of, the, the number correlates well, they say, to actual taste perception, but in my opinion, I mean, it's really about the taste of the beer, right? And the thing can be a little bit misleading anyway. There could be, you know, higher the IBU value, the bitter, more bitter the beer is. Lower, of course, less bitter. But you could have like a strong amber ale with maybe an IBU of 60, which would be much less bitter than a pale ale with an IBU of 50, say. And that's just because of the stronger sugar and the stronger flavor of the malt used in amber versus a uh, pale ale. <coughs> and that was the beer. I actually tapped this keg just before going to the airport to come to uh, the labs conference. And I let this set, I got distracted and let it set and my cool head went away before I took that photo. But I did down that thing before heading to the airport. <coughs> so we got a little bit of time and since I didn't show um, brew target in action, I'll at least go on to the problem I had. Okay, I got all this beer making equipment. I got some kegs that I got some from a friend. I, now I need some place to put this stuff and chill it and so on. And so I'm like, I'm going <coughs> to make a kegerator out of this chest freezer that I bought. So I bought this thing. And then I put hardwood floors in throughout 
parts of my house a couple of years ago and had some of that wood left over. These are actually two pieces of wood with tongue and groove put together, glued those together. <coughs> lots of sanding, lots of <coughs> built this collar that I'll place on top of that kegerator. Insulated it, um, mounted it, took the lid off the chest freezer, put this collar around there, just glued it on there. Um, you know, hooked up my <coughs> manifolds and so on inside of there, and poof, <laughs> place to store kegs and have beer. <coughs> so yeah, this was quite the Christmas present that you know went on into uh, Hack Week, which was in the July. I actually finished this before that, but it wasn't part of the Hack Week project. Um, Anyway, yeah, I guess that's about all I have to talk about. We'll have some extra time here since uh, I couldn't really show you much of the brew target software. Um, yeah, any questions? <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, I could. Uh, maybe we should. Do we have some time? Can I, can I have a question? Sure. Uh, question. Do you have also any uh, embedded controllers to control the temperature over the fermentation? I do. Um. Yeah. Yeah, but I was lazy. And actually, a friend gave me one which I use for this, um, because this is a freezer, right? I need to control the temp in there, and so I have a thermometer in there that's hooked to a controller, and you know, just turns off. I have the freezer plugged into a receptacle that's controlled by that controller, and so it just turns the compressor on when it needs uh, you know, the chill to thing more, and turns it off when it's fine. But, Seen my there's my controller in the corner. It's one that yeah I was lazy. I mean you can go on Amazon and buy these things for like twenty five bucks now, right? And it's like I want to play with my Raspberry Pi and go buy some stuff. And I just, eh, yeah, I already spent enough time making kegerators and all these things that um, you know I, I I kind of went the non geek way on some of this. All right, so should we try this? Let me see what I have here. Yeah, no, that's fine. I should do it. So without management? No, with it. That's good. Yeah. No. Ah. <laughs> Wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, we're on different subnets here or something. Oh, it's yeah, well. Okay. Yep. Um. Anyway, any other questions? Stefan, you have any uh, feedback for me? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's quite a few folks around Sousa that know more about beer making than myself. As I said, I'm kind of a noob and just getting into it, but um, do enjoy it. And promise, Claudio, I won't spend any more of Sousa's work time on Beer-related activities. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought of that since I don't bottle. I couldn't, you know, do that, and I don't, I don't have anything for bottling yet. 
uh, yeah, could have brought a whole keg. <laughs> brought that keg over here and passed out samples. But I, I did consider that. I thought of it, oh, it'd be cool to be able to bring some of this beer over here and, and you know, let everyone have a taste of it. Yeah. <laughs> 